thank you so much. Good morning and welcome to the Central Bank, my home. Um, as mentioned, the topic of my presentation this morning is the changes that must happen to keep us competitive. And basically what I will do this morning is give an analysis of the macro environment here in Curacao, our current situation, what are our strengths and weaknesses at this moment, um, so that we have an idea how we stand before the big changes that are going to be discussed later on by the next speakers. Um, I will do so by using a so-called PESTEL framework, and I will explain later on to you what this um, framework entails. Um, I must say that over the years, a lot has been done, a lot of research has been done regarding our macro environment, basically our macro economy, the macroeconomic environment of Curacao. I can say in the 90s, there were, it was researched by the IMF, by the World Bank, by the IDB, the OECD in the, in the years 2003, that also researched the Caribbean LIM Investment Initiative. Um, recently, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, the government of Curacao, conducted a research by TAC Consulting Group, Thierry Apothekers Consulting Group, and the report was recently published about a long-term plan for sustainable development. And today, I will use basically all the information that has been published in these reports. And I refer um, basically to the report of the group of Thierry Apotheker Consultants. And what's striking to me is that if you go through all this, these reports, you basically see over the past couple of 20 years the same strengths and weaknesses. So it seems like we were not capitalizing enough on our strengths on the one hand, and on the other hand, we are not addressing the weaknesses accordingly, because over the past 20 years, we still have the same weaknesses, okay? So there might be some things that are already known to you, but I will um, illustrate these um, weaknesses especially, but also the strengths, by doing some benchmarks, some comparisons between Curacao and other countries in the region. And I will use the same basket of countries as the IMF does when they do an Article 4 consultation for Curacao. So they compare us with certain countries in the region, and I will use the same countries as the IMF does. Okay. And finally, I will also briefly discuss the policy agenda to improve the competitiveness. What should we do here in Curacao to capitalize more on our strengths and um, address our weaknesses? So the PESTEL framework is a framework that analyzes the macro environment in order to understand the impact of external factors on an organization. In this context, the macro environment is Curacao. So we will be analyzing Curacao, several aspects of Curacao, and how it will affect your organization, your business, or your firm. Okay? And for companies, it is a strategic analytical tool. Using this framework, you can assess the country where you are established, or you would like to start a business venture, and see what are the opportunities that this country or this economy is offering to you. So this framework basically is composed of several factors. We have the political factors, the economic factors, social factors, technological factors, environmental factors, and legal factors. All these factors affect one way or another um, an organization or a business. Um, today, I will discuss with you all these factors except the technological factors because my colleague, Mr. Lohan, will discuss the technological factors later on um, after me. It's more, uh, um, has more expertise than me in the, the questions about technology. So let's start with the political factors. The political factors affect the organization in terms of government regulation and legal issues and define both formal and informal rules under which an organization must operate. So basically, those is the way um, government or politics approach and behave um, within a um, country. 
um, it differs a little bit from the legal factors because at the legal factors we really look at the laws and here we look at the behavior of the government. So for example, the political system, whether you have political stability, whether you have a democracy, those are the political factors. If you look at Curacao, then we would say that our strengths regarding the political factors is whether you like it or not, the fact that we are part of the Dutch Kingdom. We are part of a greater constellation. We are a small economy, a small country, but part of a greater constellation with other islands in the Dutch Caribbean, but also with the Netherlands. And the Netherlands is, for us, a gateway also to the European Union. So we have a close connection with the European Union. And sometimes we underestimate this, but many countries in the Caribbean Sometimes they ask us why are we not, for example, an independent nation, but on the other hand, they really are looking at, wow, you have such an easy access to Europe, you have a European passport, you can really do business there more easily than we can. So, it's basically the strength. Um, when we look at our weaknesses, then we have a, a political scenario that has been quite fragile over the past couple of years. Um, the fact that we have governments based on consensus and we have experienced political instability has led us to inconsistencies in our policies. So sometimes you have policy measures and then they are discontinued. Um, that has happened with lots of the um, programs I have mentioned before that were recommended to us to be implemented in the 90s in the early 2000s and recently, and they were not um, completed because every time you have a change of government. And usually for businesses, this is difficult because the entrepreneur wants this to be predictable and certain. So if you announce, for example, there will be flexibilization of the labor market, they want that to be predictable and not that after three months it stops and then after two years it's announced again and then it stops again. So it's some way or another a weakness of our system. Then we have the erosion of trade preferences. For many years we had um, a beneficial trade regime with the European Union, but they are slowly eroding all these trade preferences. So for us, I just mentioned that it's a strength for us, the close connection with the European Union, but we see that certain trade preferences that we used to have are disappearing, slowly disappearing. Then we have the part of labor regulations. Our regulations are burdensome and there is a lack of flexibility. So again, for the past 20 years, a lot has been said about flexibilizing our labor market, making it easier for people to be hired but also fired, making the regulation less complex, easier to obtain permits, etc. But there has been lots of delays in the implementation of these processes. And then also our tax and premium burden is relatively high compared to other countries in the region. And I will show you here a graph with a benchmark where you see Curacao and these are the countries I will be comparing Curacao with this morning. You see Dominican Republic, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Bermuda, St. Martin, St. Vincent, Aruba, Belize, Dominica, St. Lucia, Curacao and Jamaica. And again, these are the countries the IMF compares us with. Um, we are similar in the sense that we are Caribbean countries. We have more or less, with some differences, but more or less an economic structure dependent for a great deal on tourism. We have um, lots of imports. Um, we are open and small. I mean, open that smallness that is a certain degree because there is, a, of course, a difference between smallness when we talk about Curacao and Jamaica or Trinidad. But broader said, that these are the um, countries I will be comparing us with. And when you look at this group of countries, you see that Curacao has one of the highest um, death to GDP ratios um, with 25%. So, um, of course, for a business, it would be more beneficial if you would um, start your venture somewhere else where the death to GDP ratio is lower. So, now let's move to the economic factors. The economic factors affect the business operations and decision making of an organization. For example, the rate of economic growth. But another economic factor is important economic factor is the rate of inflation, your exchange rate, 
the unemployment rate. Those are all things that affect a business or at least the uh, in, intention of a, an entrepreneur to start to invest or not. It affects his decision to invest or not. And when we look at our economic factors, uh, the strength of Curacao is that we have a stable exchange rate back. Our gilder has been back to the US dollar since 1971 and it has been stable. Um, however, because of the PAC, we have um, limited monetary instruments. I mean, as central bank, our focus is to maintain this PAC. So we cannot really use our instruments, for example, to influence inflation or to stimulate economic growth, etc. So our focus is rather limited. We have, when we compare Curacao to other countries in the region, according to all these reports, a well-equipped infrastructure. I belong to the group also that always questions our electricity, our road infrastructure, etc. But when it is compared to other countries in the region, they say that, hey, you are quite well equipped. So, um, recently we had a meeting with Standard & Poor's and we were also saying, wow, your infrastructure is so great. And I was like, huh? <laughs> we complain all the time. But it's when you compare it with, of course. We have a relatively low inflation rate. When we talk about inflation rate, usually it's if the inflation rate is double digit, then we have a high inflation rate, and we usually do not have that. Um, our inflation is for a great deal important because we import most of our goods and services, and we see that our inflation goes more or less in line with the inflation development in the US because we import most of our goods from the United States, also oil and food prices, international oil and food prices, affect our inflation for a great deal. And one of the recent strengths that we have acquired is our low debt to GDP ratio, our public debt relative to the GDP. Um, because of the debt relief program, our debt to GDP ratio has dropped drastically. And I will show you again how we score compared to other countries. Here you see the inflation rate and the average for the period 2008 to 2013. Um, I just said that we have a relatively low inflation rate, but here you see that we belong like to the upper middle group. But that is because, um, as you know, in 2012, we implemented um, an increase of the sales tax. So the increase of the sales tax resulted in a, let's say, above normal inflation rate in our case of 3.2 percent so for that reason we had because i took the average of the past five years we scored so high but usually we are up at the lower extent with regards to the inflation here you see the debt to gdp ratio and as i mentioned to you um we have now a debt to gdp ratio of 34.8 percent which is quite low um, for our countries, um, international research says that the debt to GDP ratio of about 50% um, is acceptable, so with 34.8% you're scoring very well. Um, you see that other countries, for example Aruba is above 70%. Um, without the debt relief, Curacao would have been at this moment above 80%. So it's quite a lot that we have lost of the debt. However, um, it is important for us to maintain a low debt to GDP ratio. Of course, it can increase, but I would say if it increases, then it would be it has to be for um, public investments. For example, let's say the construction of a hospital or certain things of infrastructural um, projects. If it is for capital investments, it's okay because then you think that the economy will grow um, in the future, so that the debt to GDP ratio will um, decline again. So what are our weaknesses when we look at um, our economic factors? Well, similar to all islands in the Caribbean, we are small open economies. Um, we are a small open economy. And one of the consequences of being small and open is the fact that you have these economies of scale, especially in our production. So sometimes people, for example, compare our electricity rates with the US, you cannot compare that because we are such a small economy, so the production will always be more costly. Our healthcare costs, sometimes people say, yes, but in Colombia it's so cheap to go to the doctor and here it's so expensive in the hospital. Of course, because we have such 
a smaller population, so the base is much smaller. Um, that said, I wouldn't say that we still have efficiency gains, so there are areas where we can have efficiency gains and reduce our costs, but we have to bear in mind that we will always face this economy of scale because our sm of our smallness. And also because we are open, we are vulnerable to external shocks. So a lot of things happen outside the economy, our economy that affect us. Um, the recent international financial crisis has learned us, however, that today you would say that all economies are um, vulnerable to external shocks. In the past it used to be if you are a small island economy, you are vulnerable to shocks, but because of technological innovation, because of globalization, nowadays everyone influences it. Every economy is of influence on the other economy. Well, what we have noticed over the past 20, 10 to 20 years is that Kyrgyzstan have had, has had a very slow pace of economic growth. Growth has been very sluggish here in Kyrgyzstan. Either we are below 1% growth or we are around minus 1% um, contraction. So we are not really the, the economic driving, the economic growth is not really um, getting pace. And sometime, something that we as a central bank have been em emphasizing a lot is the high current account deficit as percentage of GDP. Of course, we are small and open economies, and I will show you later on with other Caribbean nations, we have a current account deficit because we import more goods than we export. But what we have noticed is over the past couple of years, let's say since 2005, our deficit has been increasing rapidly as percentage of GDP meaning that we are importing, the growth of our imports is exceeding the growth in our exports. And one consequence is that our net foreign indebtedness is increasing, in the sense that either we are using our foreign assets to finance our current account deficits, so our foreign deposits, for example, or we are lending more and more money from abroad. So for that reason also, we as a central bank has been tightening our monetary policy instrument with, for example, a credit restriction that you have heard of. But we have um, emphasized a lot of times that we have to focus on sustainable solutions for the current account deficit. The monetary policy instruments, we know they are not sustainable because on the other hand, they put a drag on economic growth. They, are, they have a negative effect on economic growth. So basically we have to broaden, for example, our export base so that we can reduce this current account deficit. I wouldn't say reducing our imports because if you want to invest, if you want to construct a hospital, if you want to construct a hotel, you need to import. If you um, want to have more tourists, you need to import. I mean, except the service, everything the tourists consume here in Curacao comes from abroad. So we, we cannot, I, I wouldn't say that you have to take measures to reduce imports, um, although the central bank is doing that by restricting credit, but actually on the long run you have to broaden your export base. Here you see in this graph the development in the Curacao economy, as I was saying, our, the yellow, um, the yellow graphs are the real GDP and you see our sluggish growth. Uh, below 1% for the past five years, or years, yes, five years, but before that also, or slight contractions. So we are not really moving. The economy is not moving. And I must say that if you look at the components of growth, it has been basically from the um, expenditure side, it has been basically driven by the government and private consumption. Investments has been lagging behind. And actually, we all know that investments, private investments, are the engine of sustainable growth. So we need to do something to drive those private investments, because otherwise we will keep having these sluggish growth numbers. And you see also our inflation rate. And as I mentioned to you, the 3.2% in 2012 was because of the adjustment in the sales tax rate. And before that, the, let's say, high inflationary pressures were largely the result of changes in international oil prices. Okay. Here you see the current account deficit as percentage of GDP. I can tell you that the recent Standard & Poor's report um, of two months ago um, emphasized that one of the greatest 
um, weaknesses or let's say trouble areas of our economy at this moment is to current the account deficit as percentage of GDP. And when they were here, they were asking us how do you guys manage that with such a high current account deficit to maintain the path. And I think that next month when they are here, we will hear the same story because between 2011 and now, not a lot has been done to broaden our export base. I must say, however, that the, uh, the current account deficit as percentage of GDP is currently 17.3% and it has been around 22%. So it has been declining somehow, somewhat, because I think on the one hand the measures taken by the central bank, but on the other hand also because of the negative economic growth that we have experienced. Because when there is negative growth, people are not consuming, people are not investing, so they are not important. This one is a very conceptual um, indicator, it's something that we use here at the central bank, which is the real effective exchange rate, the real. The real effective, real effective exchange rate is basically one of the most sophisticated indicators for competitiveness. It compares your country with your main trading partners in terms of competitiveness, and they look at the exports, imports, inflation, and exchange rate. And our exchange rate vis-a-vis um, -vis the dollar has been stable, but if we look at our, and when the graph, the yellow graph, when there is an increase, it means that the real effective exchange rate has been appreciating, meaning that our competitiveness has been declining. So when we look at this graph, then we can conclude that since 2009, we have been losing competitiveness compared to our main trading partners, which is not such a good development. And you also see our GDP growth rates. So there is a relationship between that because um, we, we have been um, recording negative growth because our competitiveness has been declining. We can link that one with the other. So if we want the blue line to turn up, we will have to um, drop the real effective exchange rate. We have to become more competitive. Okay? Let's now see at more weaknesses of our economic um, area. We have a relatively high unemployment rate, especially the unemployment among the youth is very high here in Curso. We have high dropout ratios also from secondary school. There is a qualitative mismatch on the labor market. The um, supply on the labor market does not meet the demand on the labor market. Lots of research has been done on this area. Lots of recommendation has been given, for example, how to change our education system, how to um, provide also trainings to um, adult, adult trainings, etc., to address this issue. Um, if you look at the productivity, then you might conclude that wages are quite high relative to productivity levels. I wouldn't say that we have to reduce our wages, but I would say let's increase our productivity. Let's change our work attitude. Let's produce a higher quality. And high cost of doing business, not only our utility costs, linked also to our diseconomies of scale, but things such as administrative barriers, red tape, bureaucracy, also increase the cost of doing business. And one other thing is the lack of long-term financing, especially for SMEs, this is quite a limitation. Um, here in Curso, we are very dependent on bank financing, but um, as a central bank also, we have been focusing or emphasizing a lot on the importance of developing a securities market, let's say a bond market. Maybe you should start with the larger companies and then have it on the longer run also for new or startup um, ventures with venture capital, etc. So that is very important and that's something that we do not have at this moment. So let's do some benchmark. Here you see the unemployment rate in 2012. For Curacao, the data is 2013 because here in Curacao, we do our um, unemployment survey, the Central Bureau of Statistics, every two years, and it was not done in 2012. So the data for the other countries refer to 2012 and we are 2013. But nevertheless, you see that in the group of countries that I was comparing with, we scored 
quite high with an uh, unemployment rate of 13%. So now let's look at the social factors. Social factors are cultural and demographic aspects of the environment. So the things, the attitudes, the culture, um, the way people behave, those things that affect your business or your way of doing business. And when we look at our strengths, you could say that um, Curacao, we have cultural diversity, we are a multicultural society, so people are quite open to new things. Or, or, although we are a, an island, we have um, a great diversity. And we have a multilingual workforce. It has been mentioned a lot of time in re times in reports. However, I have noticed that, for example, the new top report, they have said that we have a multilingual workforce, but we have to work on the quality of this multilingual workforce. In the past, we used to say everyone speaks three or four languages. But in practice, do they really um, speak those languages? Can we really provide a service in good English or in well-spoken Spanish, etc.? So we have to look also not on the amount of languages that you can speak, but also on the quality, let's say, on the skills or proficiency. Otherwise, it will become a weakness on the medium term. Um, weaknesses, when we look at the social factors, one of them is something that many countries in the world are also facing, the aging of the population. And that leads to increasing health care and social expenditures. And in order to um, address this issue, similar to many countries, we have increased our retirement age. But on the other hand, that puts also pressure on your labor market while you have high unemployment rates among the youth. So you have to create more business activities in order to have not only the 60 plus population working, but also to have jobs for the newer, younger population. We have also increasing crime rates that also affects your investment climate and the significant brain drain. Um, our youngsters go abroad, many of them do not return, or we also have, let's say, this escape, um, which is the Netherlands. In times when our economy does not um, have record good results, we can always move to the Netherlands. And that's something that happens in the mid-90s, when we, were has, we had all these structural adjustment programs that lots of people moved from Curacao to the Netherlands. And they were the teachers, the nurses, the young professionals that moved to the Netherlands. So we lost a lot of our middle class. I must say that the past years we have not seen that movement. And probably, although we had negative economic growth, but probably that is because of the situation in the Netherlands also. That the Netherlands had negative growth and, um, yeah, maybe also the, the, the perception of the Netherlands or the media towards us, that people get a little bit more reluctant about moving to the Netherlands. But we always have this escape and that leads to a brain dream. The technological factors affect the cost and quality of the outputs and it refers basically to, for example, innovation, the investments of the government in research and development, the way you are um, applying the technological infrastructure that you have in your country, etc. But my colleague will go more into detail later on with regards to this part. And then we have the environmental factors. Those are the ecological and environmental aspects such as the weather, the climate, and the climate change. How these affect your business. Our strengths, our geographical position near Latin America, and that you can link it with what I said before, the gateway to Europe. So we have a good geographical position. We have a good year-round climate. We don't have, let's say, the threat of hurricanes as much as other countries um, and islands in the region. Our weaknesses, our limited national resources. Because of our small size, we are pro prone to climate extremes. And pollution as a result of refining and oil transshipment activities is something also that either we have to upgrade um, our facilities or I would say um, we have to see how we will deal with this question. Um, and the report has also mentioned the part of waste management that is also becoming quite a challenge here in Curacao. And finally, we have the legal factors. This influences the organization's operations and the demand for its products. All the laws and rules that you have in your country. 
and the strength that is mentioned always is the Dutch legal and judiciary system. Um, about 80% of our laws and rules are comparable to the Dutch system. So um, many companies, especially foreign companies, see this as very predictable, very stable, very good. Um, so that's one strength that we have, especially towards FDI, foreign direct investors. Weaknesses, I mentioned that already before, administrative barriers and red tape. Um, I remember that when we were in the group with the um, TAC people from the Apothecaries Consultant, someone <coughs> mentioned that, for example, in Singapore, you can obtain a permit in one or two days, and here in Curacao, it takes you like six months to obtain the same permit. So, just for you to have an idea that we have quite a lot to do in this area. And still, we don't have a proper competition policy. We have been working on that. On that, as a central bank, we have also been part of the committee. But there has been lots of delays into the introduction and implementation of this law. So finally, we would like to conclude with the policy agenda. What should we do? First, we have to capitalize more from our strengths. I mentioned lots of strengths. Some of them that I think we can capitalize more on is, for example, the fact that we are part of the Dutch Kingdom, the fact that we have the Dutch um, judiciary system, our low inflation rate, our exchange rate pair. Um, those are things that we must capitalize more upon. But then we have to address our weaknesses, the labor market issues. I already mentioned the qualitative mismatch, the unemployment rate, the brain drain, um, our legislation. Basically, we have to change our legislation on the one hand, come with more flexibilization, but on the other hand, also change our education system and make it more, let's say, for the millennium generation that we have right now. Okay? With the balance of payments, I already mentioned these two things that we have to do. Um, broaden our export base, maybe develop new sectors or capitalize on the sectors that we already have and attract foreign direct investments. For example, when we talk about the export base, uh, the international financial services industry has been one of the main pillars of the Curacao economy over the years, but we have seen that the foreign exchange revenues from IFS has been declining by around 3% every year um, over the past 10 years. And we need to do something, because for example, compared to tourism that has a high import content, the IFS has no high import content, so what you get is what you have. In tourism, what you get, part of it has to go back abroad, import all the goods and merchandise and everything that the tourists will consume. We have to reduce our cost of um, doing business and we have to reduce the tax and premium burden. We have talked a lot about moving from direct taxation to indirect taxation. Some um, work has been done, but still we are not there. And then finally, I would say that when you are addressing these weaknesses and capitalizing from the strengths, it's important also to take the international environment into consideration. Look what's happening outside your own area, your own country. What are the changes taking place so that you also keep track with those changes? And I think later on, the other two speakers, Mr. Lokan and Mr. Panaflek, will especially focus on the changes that you have to bear in mind when Yes, um, addressing all these weaknesses or also developing your business. That was my presentation. I thank you for your attention and I look forward for your questions later on in the panel.